Why juries should give reasons for guilty verdicts. With the huge backlog of criminal cases, and concomitant long delays, suffered by both defendants and victims, there has been increased discussion about the necessity for juries for criminal trials. They are not used for civil cases, where a single judge is considered either adequate, or even preferable. Discussion about juries has usually led to lists of pros and cons, and a conclusion as to whether we should retain them, or ditch them. From what I've seen, most lawyers tend to conclude that juries remain the best option, and leave it at that. What hasn't been discussed so much, is whether the cons could be rectified, and the jury system improved. If we are to keep trial by jury for serious criminal cases, that does not mean they should not be improved. There are a number of ways I can suggest, but foremost among these is that, in my view, juries should be required to give reasons for their verdicts. This means that, as in some other countries, jurors should have to explain which bits of evidence, or which route to verdict, they relied on, to come to their decision, especially if that decision was guilty. Despite hundreds of years of having a jury system, there has been remarkably little research into this critical facet of justice. Understanding the detail of how juries arrive at their verdicts, is hampered by Section 8 of the Contempt of Court Act 1981. It is a contempt of court, to obtain, disclose, or solicit, any particulars of statements made, opinions expressed, arguments advanced, or votes cast, by members of a jury, in the course of their deliberations in any legal proceedings. In other words, jury members cannot talk about their verdicts, or their deliberations, and no one else is allowed to ask them. We are kept in the dark about what goes on in the jury room, and the justice system does everything it can, to prevent us finding out. Such research as there is, therefore relies on, evidence from other countries where jurors are allowed to talk about it. Numerical data, numbers of convictions under certain conditions etc. Simulated trials where the fake jurors can be quizzed as to their thinking. But each of these methods has its drawbacks. Evidence from other countries does not necessarily translate directly to England and Wales. You can only draw inferred conclusions from numerical data, you can't really know why they are as they are. Simulated trials can only provide a small amount of data, based on the limitations of those trials. Proponents of the jury system, will often tell you how successful juries are, at finding the right verdict. But are they really? How do we know? You can't even look to the number of successful appeals, as currently, the Court of Appeal doesn't actually consider whether a jury decision was right or not. Essentially, juries are treated as infallible, and the Court of Appeal only allows appeals, where new evidence is presented, which the jury did not see, and are therefore excused of blame. How do we know there was not discrimination, prejudice, confirmation bias, bullying of weaker-minded jurors, lack of understanding of the issues, or of the judge's directions, or whether they understood them, but ignored them anyway, etc. Additionally, if a jury initially cannot reach a unanimous verdict or even a majority verdict, but, after the judge asks them to continue deliberating, they do return a verdict, how can we know what happened to change their minds? How many short were they to begin with? Who changed their minds, and why? Was it persuasion by logical argument, or by bullying? If you, or someone close to you, was convicted in such a way, would you not think it important to know the answers to these questions? When a defendant's liberty in future, depends on whether jurors are strong-minded or not, easily persuadable, or bullyable by other jurors, such questions are crucial. Research presented by Cheryl Thomas, in the Ministry of Justice research series, shows a range of issues which should be of concern, including Wide differences in verdicts, when the defendant, or alleged victim, was of different ethnic origin. Worrying lack of comprehension of judges' directions. Jurors who looked at their cases on the internet, despite warnings that they should not, 
especially if they were higher profile cases. Confusion about how jurors should report impropriety of fellow jurors. Most or all of these issues would be remedied by jurors having to explain the reasoning behind their decisions. The Criminal Cases Review Commission, CCRC, is the supposedly independent body, charged with discovering miscarriages of justice, and sending them back to the Court of Appeal when a first appeal has failed. I say supposedly independent, because the cases they refer, are bound by the same rules as other cases. In other words, the Court of Appeal has to be persuaded, that any evidence presented by the CCRC, which, as I've said, must be fresh evidence, would have been sufficient to change a jury's decision, had they known about it at the time. One of the main problems is that, if you do not know on what basis the jury arrived at its decision, how is the CCRC, or the Court of Appeal, to know what would have changed a jury's mind? If the jury had a number of what is known as routes to verdict, suggested in the judge's summing up, the jury may have only taken one of them but it would not be known which one. This is why it is a mistake to suggest that the judge's summing up provides the jury's reasons. It does not. At best, it provides options, but if the verdict seems strange, the judge's summing up explains nothing. Even if the CCRC put forward fresh evidence, which would in fact have changed the verdict, they cannot prove it. The Court of Appeal can still reject the appeal, on the basis that the jury may have taken a different route to verdict. Had the jury given its reasons, and disclosed its route to verdict, an appeal which was dismissed, could have resulted in a true miscarriage of justice being remedied. In the interests of balance, I will point to a paper by Bird and Hans, in Cornell, USA, entitled Reasoned Verdicts Oversold in which they purport to look at the evidence, both for, and against. They conclude with a, not sure but probably not slant, on the basis that there has not been sufficient research into the benefits, so better the devil you know. However, their reasoning is somewhat bizarre. This quote, for example. The procedural difficulties associated with reasoned verdicts, may outweigh the potential benefits. We described the experience in Spain, for example, where substantial numbers of cases have been overturned, as the courts found jurors' written documentation of their reasoning, to be inconsistent or insufficient. So they seem to find fault with potential miscarriages of justice being overturned, because it was discovered that the jurors' reasons for convicting, were inconsistent or insufficient. That sounds to me, like an excellent argument, in favour, of jurors giving reasons for verdicts. The argument for jurors having to give reasons, is especially strong when the verdict is guilty. However, for those who consider that too many guilty perpetrators of a crime, are getting away with it, the argument for reasoned verdicts may also help with not guilty verdicts. In trials with only a judge and no jury, judges do give reasons for the decisions. If it is considered necessary or advisable for judges to give reasons, why should it be different for juries? I have not, so far, come across a halfway compelling argument against it. The idea that just because there are more people, juries are not subject to bias, prejudice, or some other influence, does not hold water. There is no valid reason, why juries should be exempt from the general eagerness for accountability which is applicable in all other areas of life. Politicians, judges, lawyers, are all accountable. In fact it was notable, that in his first speech as Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak stressed that his government, would be accountable. But juries, with the power to effectively end an innocent person's life, are not. It makes no sense. Proper research into the effectiveness of the jury system, and where further improvements may be made, is severely hampered by the secrecy under which verdicts are discussed and delivered. It is possible that our ignorance about the effectiveness of the jury system, is what frightens some people, who fear that discovering how juries arrive at perverse decisions, may unlock a Pandora's box of problems. But that is no reason to prevent it.
If we did discover that juries were, after all, pretty unreliable, the sooner we know about it, and the sooner we can fix it, the better.